Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 99. So this is part three of uh, tonight's set of tutorials. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. And we'll also open up uh, Mono Develop. And we left off where we just finished implementing all the functions that just basically call the animations that we need. Now since we're talking about animations, let's go all the way back up to start. And I'm going to add a line right down here. And it's animation.stop. And what this does is that if we set any animation to start automatically, uh, when a game object is put into the scene when the game starts, uh, it's going to stop it. So we have um, play automatically and it's going to play the idle animation. Now sometimes you'll just forget to set this up. Uh, and what I do to make sure that I don't have some silly animation set in there to run, uh, just call it animation stop. So when it starts up, it won't play any animation. Then at the end of my start function, I actually just call the animation I want to play. Now I believe we talked about wrap mode in one of the previous videos. But since we're in the start function, well, we might as well put this in here as well. Now by calling animation.wrap mode, you're setting all the wrap modes for all the animations. And what the wrap mode is, is basically how this animation uh, works. Like for instance, you can have it loop. So the animation just keeps playing over and over and over again. You can just have it play once or ping pong where it, you know, it starts at the beginning, it goes to the end, and then goes to the end to the beginning again. Then of course you can you know, like clamp forever where it stops on the last frame. Uh, by default, I'm going to set all of my animations to loop. Now there are some animations that you're not going to want to have loop, uh, such as your jump animation. So I'm actually going to call the animation jump for in instance. And I'm going to specifically set its wrap mode uh, to be once. Because you don't want to be jumping in the air and, you know, basically having your animation go off where you're kicking your legs and whatnot. Maybe you do. Uh, for my animation, I don't want that. And since we're while we're here, we might as well also talk about layers. So let me set this up. Animation. And I'll just keep working with jump. And I'm going to set that to 1. Now, all animations start off at layer 0. And think of it as kind of like different levels of animation. The higher the level of animation, the more weight that is given to that animation when, they're, when you're doing your crossfades. So when I'm trans... Uh, when I'm going from, let's say, an idle animation to a jump animation, uh, right now my idle animation is going to be layer one, and my jump animation is layer. Oh, sorry, my idle animation is layer zero. My jump animation is layer one. So more weight will be used up for my jump animation over my layer animation or over the idle animation. Uh, it's kind of a tongue twister. So basically, just think of it as the higher the layer, the more weight is used from that animation compared to one that's lower than it. And since we're talking about jump, let's go ahead and set the variables up for that. And of course, we're going to make them public for now. So the first one's going to be a float. And we're just going to call this jump height. So basically, how high does your character jump when you hit the space bar or whatever key you have set up to be jump? Uh, by default, it's the space bar, and I'm going to leave it like that in the input manager. I actually think I'm going to jump a little higher. Probably not quite 10. So the height we move when we are jumping. And I'm going to want to create, create another float. And this will be jump time. And this will allow us to compare our air time to our jump time to see if we're playing the jump animation. So we'll make this, so I don't know, about 1.5 seconds. Sounds like a good starting spot. 
and let's go implement some code for it. So we'll come down to update and I'm going to want to put it in my uh, is grounded part. So I'll just add it right after this and let's just check to see if the jump key has been pressed. So if input dot get button and the virtual button we're looking for is called jump and I've used capitals for my input manager. So if the jump button is pressed, I am just simply going to check to see if my air time is less than my jump time. So this way here, if we're actually falling for any amount of time, I don't want the person to be able to basically jump in midair. So that'll stop that. And all I'm going to do is just move direction dot y and I'm just going to add my jump height. Now you may want to add a play around with it a bit to uh, give it kind of a better arc but I want a fairly quick you know ramp straight up and then after that I'm just going to call my jump animation. So that should be everything I need for jump. Let's go into Unity and check that out. So there's no errors. I'm just going to click on my player, not my player camera, but the actual player. And I'll just hit play. So here he is on the ground. I'm just going to hit the space bar. And there he goes. So you can run around and jump on all sorts of things. So that, yeah, that's about the jump height I want to start off with. And of course, you know, I can make a jump skill and that'll influence how high I can jump but yeah it's a pretty good jump uh, considering his knees are bending not a whole lot so his knees are going to about the average person's shoulders so that's a pretty high jump so we'll go back into model develop and let's implement the rest of uh, the animation calls and we're going to do it just you know a little bit different than we did last time, just for learning experience. So we're going to check to see if input dot get button, and the button we want to check since this is going to be the walking, it was move forward. So if that is pressed, we'll do something. And the thing we're going to do is call the walk animation. Now, while we're also in here, what we can do is if they're moving forward, and I spelt that wrong, if they're moving forward, let's also check to see if they're holding down the run key, which for me was the shift key. So while I'm in here, I'll say if input dot get button. And I believe I just call it run. If not, I'll get an error. And if I'm running, all I want to do is take my move direction. And then just simply multiply it by my run, run multiplier. And then, of course, call my run animation. Now up here where I'm checking to see if I'm pressing the move forward button if I'm not pressing the move forward button I'm gonna want an out statement and this will just call the idle animation now if we look in here we're saying if we're pushing the forward button uh, check to see if we're pressing the run button as well if we are you know make us run move faster call the run, run animation and then call the walk animation. Not quite what we want. So while we're here, we'll just fix that too. We'll want to put this in an else block. So we're either running or we're walking, not both. And I think that's about it. So let's go in, save it off. We'll go into Unity. Uh, no errors. Let's hit play. We drop to the ground. We got our walk animation. We stop. We can turn so we can walk and jump. 
jump up on things. I still have to fix my actual idle animation. I believe what the problem was, was if you actually look at it, um, the curves weren't set on the transform, it looks like. So I'll have to actually manually go in and change that. But uh, that's a different video. <laughs> so what else? Do we, oh, run. We want to make sure we could run. Now my run animation looks a little weird. Uh, I seem to be skating. So this would probably be a good time to implement the speed. So I'm going to go down to my run method. And I'm going to change the animation speed of, well, that animation. At least the speed it plays at. So animation. And the animation we want to call, which is, well, alter, which is run. Dot speed. And I'll make that equal to, well, let's start off with 1.5. So I'm going to save that off. We'll come back in and we'll see how 1.5 looks. So we'll start it off, get turned around to a nice straightaway. <laughs> that run just cracks me up. But it seems to be a good speed. He's not sliding everywhere. I do think he is kind of walking fast. Uh, so let's shrink that down. Let's bring it down to three. So I want it to be really slow because you are going to be altering it for uh, your attributes and skills that you have. So yeah, that looks pretty good. And the run's still good too. Great. Let's go back into Mono Develop and take a look. I'm going to get rid of these debug statements. And it looks like we're just over 12 minutes here, so I'm going to call this uh, this a night, and we'll get we'll work on the strafing tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye bye.